I think at the end of the day, it's really important to just be true to who you are and, and be honest with yourself about you and your family and how your family lives and functions in the home. Cause you might love a beautiful white sofa, but if you know that you don't have what it takes to keep up with that, be honest with yourself, you know, yeah. and because otherwise you will be so stressed in your home all the time and your kids won't be having fun. And so I think it comes down to having that good kind of reality check with yourself yeah. and then, and then moving forward from there. Welcome to the Speech Source Podcast. My name is Mary Brzeek. And I'm Kim Dillon. We are two pediatric speech language pathologists with a combined 25 years of experience. We are your source for speech, language, feeding, play, and much more in between. Welcome to the Speech Source Podcast. Today we have an awesome guest on this morning. I'm so excited to introduce her. Her name is Bailey Parrish, and she is an interior designer here in Fort Worth. Bailey and I got to know each other actually because we went to school together all growing up and she was one of my younger sister's really good friends. So she went to Baylor and got her interior design degree. She started in corporate design in Dallas and Houston and then she transitioned to residential design, designing for families in Austin and now Fort Worth and She's had a ton of great experience. We are so excited to talk with her today because we wanted to ask Bailey about what are her secrets and tips of designing for families. And it's so amazing how her designs and having great designs can actually influence and change your behaviors and how you live in a space. So Bailey, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, I'm happy to be here. Well, I know that one thing that's probably changed your design aesthetic quite a bit is the fact that you now have two young children yourself. I'm sure that really helps you understand families so well of what they're looking for. Definitely. I, I thought that I had a pretty good understanding of it before, you know, just certain materials, all that. Um, but it's a whole different ball game actually putting that into practice and finding that functionality and flow. You told me that you really see a lot of young families and you also kind of are designing for different life stages, like grandparents as well are wanting to redesign and just change the way their home functions. Can you talk a little bit about your clients and the kind of people that you're designing for? Yeah. So I think my clients really do sort of fall into those two categories, but the thing that they have in common is sort of this stage of life change. Um, for the younger families, you know, they've got a couple kids under their belt, they've had some time in the workforce, and they're finally finding themselves ready to invest in their homes. And so they're trying to do that in a way that makes them feel proud of their homes, but is still really functional for their kids and, you know, doesn't just make it feel too stiff or anything. And then for some of my other clients that are more in the empty nesters or retirees category, they're also going through a change of life. They're updating their decades old designs and they are a lot of times looking towards the future, which for a lot of them means grandkids. And so it's the same thing. They want to elevate their look, their design, uh, but they want to keep it really practical, family friendly. I have a lot of questions with that too, because it's something I've always struggled with, with wanting to have a space that feels, you know, just clean and put together and organized, but that is also a space that we can live in and that my kids can play in. And sometimes I've had a hard time figuring out how those can mesh together. And is this something you see when you go into a lot of these families' homes? They're not wanting to just purge all of their toys. I mean, we have young kids here and we want to keep them engaged. I mean, that's what we're talking about on this podcast. Half the time is like how to play with your kids, how to engage with your kids. And sometimes mm -hmm. that we need items around for that. So what are some tips you're giving families for that? That's absolutely something that I run into a lot. <laughs> and with myself personally, before I had kids, I always said, I don't want it to look like a daycare when you walk into my house. Mm -hmm. Cause I live here, you know, uh, but now having kids, I'm going, okay, I get it. Like they do live here. You have to have some, some things out for them and you want them to be happy and enjoy themselves. So um, I think it's really finding that balance of, you know, making the, the space overall, something that speaks to you and your family has a grown up sensibility to it. 
but then being really strategic about your storage, having storage in a lot of places that's really accessible, easy to throw things into and easy to hide if you need to, or move from room to room are definitely some of the the light quick ways to do it for sure. You know, looking at your design and your aesthetic, you're designing beautiful spaces that just, I feel like I can breathe when I look at your designs, but I'm (laughs) sure kids feel the same thing. They might not be able to explain why that is, but kids gravitate towards certain spots in our home. What makes a space feel comfortable or just well-designed or a place you even want to be in? What qualities are those? I think that the main elements for being comfortable in a space is that it's a space that reflects you and your family. So you, when you feel at ease in your space, you get to really be yourself. You know, you're not trying to be somebody else. You're not trying too hard to like protect the certain piece of furniture. And that being said, if you love white sofas and you're willing to do the work to protect it, then that makes you comfortable. And I think that kids feed off of that guests feed off of that when they come over if the space reflects you truly and you know what you're getting into with it, then it's, it shows. And I think it rubs off on others. And you talked a little bit about that white sofa, that that is something that a <laughs> lot of parents want. How do you do mm-hmm. that? So if you want a white sofa, it might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but I, that's one of those areas where I think it's worth splurging on because when you pay a little bit higher amount for it, you're going to get a better quality in the overall frame. Your cushions are going to be constructed in a way that they're more durable and you're going to get a higher quality fabric that would be a performance fabric. I would only recommend the nicest performance fabrics for um, a white sofa. And then with all of that, then I also recommend buy that warranty. You know, a lot of people will offer a five-year warranty where if any life spill happens on the couch in five years, they will come and clean it for you or replace it if they can't. And then just knowing deep down, like you have to, you have to maintain it. You have to be willing to accept that spills are going to happen and you need to know what it takes to clean that and just be willing to do those things. So if, if you want the white sofa, it's totally doable, but you just need to know what you're getting into. So Whenever my clients want something like that, then I try to give them all the information up front. Another great way to do it is to go the slip cover route because you can always take them off and actually have them washed. And so there are sort of a few different ways to do it. And especially if you can't splurge, then a cheaper slip cover sofa is a great way to kind of get that look and not feel quite as scared to get it messed up. Someone told me once when we we're buying our first sofa, that your sofa is really like your workhorse. That is going to be, it's where like the whole family tends to gather. It becomes like the heart of the home in so many homes. And it's what, you know, I say it has to withstand the most love from your family and from your kids. It's either coffee and wine from the adults, or, you know, you get cozy sitting in that one spot. So it's going to make some indentions Oh yeah. Um, and then kids, they want to build their forts. They want to eat their snack. They want to put their freshly dirty hands on it. And so making sure that you have a fabric that's cleanable, wipeable, um, you know, a lot of like the Krypton sunbrella inside out, the fabrics are made to repel water essentially, or liquid, and then learning how to clean it, you know, blotting versus rubbing and all of that. You can go into it for days, (laughs) but just kind of being really prepared and actually investing in that piece makes it more durable if you're able. And I think what I've seen and you're probably seeing this with your little ones too, but throughout the years, it doesn't matter what you have set up for them in other rooms. If it's a playroom, <laughs> their bedroom, you have set it up for their entertainment up there. They're going to be around you, especially those younger years. And they're going to find their way back down, most likely to the living room. If you're yeah. sitting there having your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think these tips are great because this is going to be a family space that everybody Mm -hmm. sees, but it's also where your kids are going to play and they're going to be with you, especially when they're younger and they're going to be around a lot. So finding ideas on how to make that a functional space for your family, but also a functional space for your kids seems like it's just one of the number one priorities for families with these younger years. Definitely. 